So my entire life, I was the anti-drug, sports-addicted child. You know, I didn't drink in college. I was so focused on trying to run the 200 on the track team while playing on the baseball team, while taking eight, nine classes a semester, trying to advance in the world. I was very motivated. And so when I first experienced cannabis from a medicinal standpoint for my shoulders, you know, I was in my late 30s, and I was still a skeptic. I was a health advocate. I study longevity, I do a variety of yoga to work on my spirit, to allow my endorphins to calm down because I get so excited about ideas. But what I'm trying to get across is that I am an advocate uh, for the use of cannabis in certain situations. And so I was able to use it for pain relief in my shoulders. And it was so, it took down some of the anxiety I had for uh, with work and family and other things that were happening at that point that I started uh, talking to my father about it, and he had experienced it when he was uh, a teen, and he talked about some of the benefits of it, but uh, you know, it was difficult to be able to find a high quality product, and uh, he had paranoia, and he was a family, you know, a member of our family uh, that was supporting us, so he couldn't ever take the edge off, right? So he had to be so focused about trying to create a living, becoming a writer, which is so difficult, and be the, uh, you know, the, the breadwinner of the family, while my mother and I and my sister, um, you know, were basically always supporting him because he was able to write at home. And it was a great, memorable experience. But he did not use cannabis, you know, throughout this time. And so when we were talking about it and I started experiencing it, uh, he, we had some, you know, funny moments of kind of these uh, eye-opening experiences when you first start using cannabis where you think of the world a little bit differently. It's more of an objective standpoint in the sense that you get out of your own so inner focus. And that could be with CBD or THC. But anyway, my father moved to North Carolina and uh, he was more, it's more of a conservative state, so he didn't even want to think about it. So this is a man who hasn't experienced cannabis since his, you know, mid uh, 20s. So when he came down with brain cancer, um, you know, over the dozens of times uh, of the visits, I always recommended CBD for three reasons. One is that I'd seen studies related to oncology that looked uh, very promising. Second is a lot of anxiety. I mean, this man didn't regularly see doctors, even though he was extremely fit. He rode his bike across America in six weeks. Think about that in his 50s. It's crazy. He was a vegan, um, very passionate, brilliant, brilliant man. And so he took great care of his health. But this brain cancer, the same one McCain has, um, took his life quickly. I mean, it was a year. And they were advocates. They were working out. They were doing the different uh, diets. Uh, they were. They had a, a real game plan. But I tried to get CBD as an early part of the program. I tried and tried, and it got to the point where my father said to me. He said to me multiple times, and it still breaks my heart. He said, uh, "Be my son, not my doctor." And um, this is like your hero, right? And it's a person that always established thought and really gave me so many awakenings. And so I was pushing, you know, CBDs to be such an early part of the process. And um, the doctor said, no, no. I mean, there's conservative doctors. And then he went to Duke and, um, you know, they were more open to it, but they didn't really advocate it. So my parents didn't move forward. And um, literally a couple months before he, he passed, he started being open to it. And he had one experience that was wonderful. He was able to finally sleep. and. Imagine going through cancer treatments twice a day and having insomnia. I mean, think about that. You can't even get an hour of rest. Imagine how cranky and how horrible that would be, having your blood drawn, the radiation. You can only imagine. So the first time he experienced CBD, he slept that night. And that was just a little topical rub. I didn't, it was a microdose. Um, and I tried to establish it more of a regular plan, not only for the pain relief and anxiety, but actually medicinally because there's been thousands of studies. Uh, a lot of them aren't released due to all the different pharma corruption dollars. But anyway, the thing that really bothers me is that it was only a couple of weeks before he passed that he sent me an email saying, you know, I've been approved, I would like to experience this. And he wasn't able to really type that much. So for him to, this is a writer that's written, you know, dozens of books that are five, 600 pages. And for him not to be able to even write a sentence or so forth and to request the only thing in the communication those two days of CBD, two weeks before, I only wonder what could have been, right? Um, and it just, it, it breaks my heart. But one of the things that 
I learned from my father during this process is he was grateful that he learned the time clock of when his life would end, right? So every single day we take for granted and we go through the same routine. We wake up, we spend eight hours at work, an hour in traffic. We don't spend any family time. We don't communicate about real issues. Everything is about gossip or social media or some nonsense. We don't really talk about what's really happened in the world. I mean, so many different horrible, horrible things. We're so fortunate to even be in such a wonderful land as America and we take it for granted every day. And so when he knew that, hey, I probably only have six months or a year, 18 months, I mean, this was a disease where there was no recovering. It was just how long you extend your life. Is it days, weeks, months? And this is a man that was healthy, healthy. He just published another book. He was 72. Like we were talking about that he lived till his 90s, 95s. I mean, they grew their own vegetables in the ground and they ate them every day. I mean, this is how healthy minded they were. And so he had such an objective, pragmatic stance on it, saying, I only have this amount of months. And um, we always thought it would be a lot longer. I mean, we thought we had an extra year or so forth. So at the end, it moved really quickly. But he was able to have these spiritual endings, like bookends of life, about perspectives he's had every time from a child to an adult. And when you know that you're able to kind of end things in your terms, he was able to really enjoy those days and it was smiles and it was love and it was just it was the deterioration of the body but it was the growth of the soul because if you know that there's an end time frame then you approach it differently it's like when you're trying to you know race or something you're like I only have five more seconds and you give it that extra push it's like that with your spirit in the sense that if you know there's an ending to this journey that we all face then you approach the final days differently. So anyway, um, this video is for anybody that has a family member that um, uh, has a cancer. I, uh, I would do what you need to do to try to convince that person to experience cannabis for the first time. And I would try to do whatever you can to get past the healthcare bureaucracy and the pharma corruption that currently exists because they deserve the benefits of CBD. It is uh, something that is a shame. There's been so much hate and uh, legislative lobbying uh, against because it will really change the way that that person approaches their health care. It will allow them to have a longer lifespan and it will give them a different perspective on life. Uh, this plant, its nourishment for the soul is uh, it's something that can't really be experienced um, unless um, you've really had your soul uh, attacked and that could be from cancer or uh, some type of internal struggle. So um, for everyone out there, have an experience, have a talk with somebody that's facing death, their own internal extinction, because if they do not at least pursue that path scientifically, look at the evidence, look at it from a third party standpoint, from a person that's been there and for a person that wished it was a little bit earlier, heart cutting him.